This recording looks at some of the more commonly encountered parallel flow mechanisms and highlights some areas that people often overlook. We'll use the business scenario of applying for a credit card as follows. An application for a credit card is received and entered into the system. It's run through three automated checks in parallel. One checks the credit rating of the applicant, another checks against a fraud detection system, and the third checks against any existing debit account the applicant may have with this organisation. Once all three checks have completed, a business user reviews the application and makes a decision on whether a card can be issued. This scenario covers several basic process patterns which we'll highlight as we build the model. We start with a model that just shows the user tasks. There are two user tasks and we can see that they've been linked together without any automated tasks or any conditionalization. This connection shows the first pattern, known as sequence. The connection is defined as uncontrolled, which means that it contains no conditionalization. This indicates that when one task finishes, the next task is created, and it shows the transfer of responsibility for processing the credit card application. We want to create some automated checks. We add three service tasks. One to check credit rating. This would probably link to an external credit agency. Then one to run a fraud check. This tries to match information such as client name and address, IP address the application was sent from, and proposed logon ID and password against known offenders. And finally, one to check for any existing accounts the applicant has with us, for example a debit card or savings account. Now we need to link these in, and we want them to run in parallel. So we use a gateway and make its type parallel fork, also known as an AND gateway. If we look at the paths that we've just connected, we can see that they're all uncontrolled. There's no conditionalization on any of them. This gateway delivers the pattern known as parallel split, and it'll always run an instance of every outgoing path. We can't predict when each of these three tasks will run and when they'll complete. The whole point of the parallel split is that these three paths are independent. There's no inherent synchronization between them, and no communication between them. Having started these parallel paths, we now want to wait until they all finish before proceeding. To do this, we add in the same type of gateway, an AND gateway. And again we see that there are no conditions on any of the paths. This gateway delivers the pattern known as synchronization. It waits for every incoming path to complete, then proceeds along one instance of the outgoing path. It's worth noting that the official definition of this pattern in BPMN, and also the independent academic workflow patterns definition, is that all incoming paths must complete before the later task is enabled. So every path must be enabled and every path must complete. If any path might not be enabled or might not complete, maybe due to an exclusive choice along one of the paths, then a structured synchronizing merge pattern must be used instead. If you don't ensure that every path will be both activated and completed, then this pattern may well wait forever. That's the public definition of the pattern. This model has shown us three patterns, sequence, parallel split, and synchronization. Please take a moment to review this summary. Press pause if you need more time. The final segment of this video follows, and it displays written descriptions of use case scenarios for the workflow control pattern or patterns just described.